uh, like I said, winemaker, founder of Killacanoon. And we're just sitting here in our barrel shed at Killacanoon with my father, Mort, Mort Mitchell, the one and only. Um, so basically, uh, I just want to talk a bit about the brand Killacanoon, uh, where it all started. Dad, uh, you came to Clare back in 1948. So, uh, at, what, at what age were you when you and your father planted your first vineyards? Probably around about 21 when we put the first bead in. 21, 22 in there somewhere. Okay, okay. So obviously the Mitchells have a, a long history of grape growing in the Clear Valley, but, but not as long as my mother's family, the Duke side of the family. And mum's side were very much into orchards. They're orchardists and beekeepers, so, and they were also based in Pembertham. Um, so, uh, you know, back then the Clare was a, was a, a real source area for, for, for fruit and vegetables for the Adelaide market. Um, and uh, I guess there's a lot, a lot of guys probably back in the 60s and 70s, uh, when orchards sort of fell away, they got into vineyards as well. So for me, um, really uh, part of my DNA, I guess, is, is viticulture, grape growing and winemaking. Um, <clears throat> I guess uh, as, as a young guy, I went to university, didn't really know what I was going to be, to be honest. I, I, I did an ag science degree, um, and I guess whilst, whilst at Rosalie College, at Lake Guinea, um, really became interested in wine. There was a wine course that were, that were run in parallel with agricultural science, and for me, I really gravitated towards wine. Having a background in viticulture, having, uh, I guess, a winemaking family, Dad's younger brother's a winemaker. Uh, I guess that resonated a lot, and I really I started to work and move more in the social circles of winemakers, and uh, basically finished the ag science, re remained at university, and in studied enology, uh, finishing back in the early 90s. So um, from there, got experience here and there, working for other companies overseas for a bit, but I guess there was always this uh, this longing that I had to, to return to Clare, to my roots, if you like, and probably establish a small brand, a boutique brand of my own that I could really build on um, through you know, buying vineyards, uh, uh, obviously perhaps to work with Dad again and, uh, and, and basically back in 1997 the brand Killicanoon was born um, and, and based on two vineyards, one that I bought uh, a year or two earlier and, and one that Dad had had for uh, probably since the early 70s I guess. Correct, yeah, early 70s. Correct, yeah. So uh, those two vineyards, I guess, provided the cornerstone for the Killicanoon brand. Um, <clears throat> and from there, uh, I remember our first vintage very well, back in, uh, back in 1997. And, uh, and uh, in, in, that, uh, in that portfolio, we had four wines, a very noble quartet, Riesling, Cabernet Sauvignon, Shiraz and Grenache. And to this very day, those wines are still made in our Killicanoon portfolio. So they've, they've come the whole journey with us, which has been great. Um, a bit about the, the name Killicanoon. Killicanoon, uh, for me, returning to Clare one weekend, in fact, in 1997, there was a property for sale in the Skilligalee Valley, in fact, called Killicanoon. Um, basically, it's a very old stone hut, <clears throat> or if you like, a settler's cottage, uh, built back in the 1860s, and uh, it had been named Killicanoon after uh, basically some Cornish immigrants that had come over and named it after an estate in, in Cornwall. <clears throat> so really, um, historically, the, the property from whence the name came goes back a long, long way. Uh, Clare was founded back in 1839, so this cottage was built really only a few years after the settlement of Clare. The earliest days of the Killicanoon story, um, you know, the brand has really been driven by this, this desire, I guess my desire, to, to work with you know, fruit that's been grown a certain way. Drawing on my father's... Um, and what he does and what, he, what he's proud to do and what he does to this day. You know, his idea of grape growing is, is, is very, it's very timeless, it's traditional, and everything is done the old fashioned way. Um, there's no, there are no shortcuts, it's hand pruned, it's hand picked. Uh, every vine is a blank canvas. Um, every vine's got to pull its weight. And I think for us at Killicanoon, the brand has, is built on that philosophy. The wines are essentially, they're, they're handmade, they reflect the unique of the terroir where they came. And as the brand has grown um, to be a lot larger than it was in the early days, we haven't lost sight of that. And really the, the, the wines still connect strongly with, you know, single vineyards from the Clare Valley. Uh, you know, the providence of the brand is, is very profound. And I think that goes back to what I've learned from my father. 
you know, that these things are timeless, they take time to get right, and our wine make today is exactly the same. We don't take any shortcuts, um, our wine making methodology is the same. It's, uh, it's done on very traditional lines, basket pressing, um, individual batches kept to the very end, you know, branded barrels, um, all those things we've used, I think, to our advantage in, in really keeping things very, very, um, if you like, very honest, very truthful, and, and really having that providential line to where, uh, where the brand really began. Yeah, and that gives me, as a winemaker, some wonderful material to work with. You know, lovely old vines, um, tended beautifully by my father and guys that have come after him. And, uh, but what's, I guess, most exciting is that he's still there today, still doing it. And he's still working for us, still pruning, you know, still, if you like, giving guidance to, um, you know, to what we really need to, uh, to keep, keep in focus with. Uh, within Killicanoon itself. And I think one of the strengths of Killicanoon as a brand has been the fact that we are based in the Clare Valley. And the Clare Valley for me is a wonderful canvas to work with. And what makes Clare so special is that um, it's, it's, it's diversity. It's, uh, despite being a very small region, the area varies a lot over a very small distance. And for that reason, Clare is just so wonderful for doing everything from Riesling to Shiraz, to Cabernet. It does so many things so well. And that's, that's because of the topography. Um, the valley is very rising, very undulating. Um, it's got areas that are cooler, areas that are warmer, um, north facing, south facing. The soil types here are very, very um, conducive to viticulture. A lot of the valley is, is that real uh, terra rossa soil, which we hear a lot about. Um, <clears throat> terra rossa is basically uh, a duplex soil. We've got this wonderful rich red loam, tops all over a lovely limestone base. And back in the old days, before irrigation was, was part, of the, part of the process, um, those soil profiles allowed vines to, to, to recharge their, their roots during winter time. And if the summer was dry, they would be allowed to kick on because the limestone is a great source of moisture. Uh, and the vines can draw through that over the summer months. And really, until probably 20, 25 years ago, nearly all the vines in Clear were dry grown. And, uh, even to this day in Killicanoon, in our, in our portfolio of vineyards, um, with many old vineyards, uh, and, and they're virtually nearly all dry grown. And because of their history, because of their growth habit, the way they've exploited the soil, um, they continue to perform every year, year in, year out. Um, I mentioned earlier about we, we have four wines which we, we, we make to this very day. Well, we've broadened our portfolio significantly. But what we haven't lost sight of is we've really kept our focus on <clears throat> single vineyard wines. And many of these wines are based on very old vineyards, where the, the Tuara is very unique and, and very distinctive. And one comes to mind is one of our flagship wines called the Itunga. The Itunga is um, basically a, a, a very small cuvee made from a vineyard near Auburn um, that uh, goes back to 1865. So that's an amazing thing. And what's special about that is that in, 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 in South Australia, particularly in the Clare Valley, uh, we have, we've never had phylloxera. So whereas the old world was decimated by phylloxera uh, 150 years ago, uh, many, many vineyards in South Australia um, never had that. So we've had that, uh, we've been able to keep those vineyards alive, to keep managing them, to keep uh, culturally improving them. And one of those ended up in a, in a wine called the Atunga. And for that, that's a marvellous part of our portfolio.